We have been looking for many years for a Sunday law to be enacted in our land. And now that the movement is right upon us, we ask, will our people do their duty in the matter? Can we not assist in lifting the standard and in calling to the front those who have a regard for their religious rights and privileges? We'd like to welcome you once again to another study. As we are once again looking at the signs of the times, how the stage has been set for the new world order. And from this moment on, the final movements are going to be rapid ones indeed. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that soon and very soon, whether we are ready or not, we are going to see the King in His glory. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father which art in heaven, I pray, Lord, that you'll bless us at this time as we spend a moment in your word. As I just said a moment ago, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. I pray, Father, that not only I, but everyone listening and studying alone will be found waiting for the Master, will be among the saints that will reign with Him forever and ever in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of glory. We ask for forgiveness of all our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to direct your attention to a passage on the screen, which is found in the book of Testimonies, volume 6, page 14. It says, we are standing upon the threshold of great and solemn events. Prophecies are fulfilling. Strange eventful history is being recorded in the books of heaven. Notice now, strange eventful history is being recorded in the books of heaven. Everything, how many now? Everything in our world is in agitation. There are wars and rumors of wars. The nations are angry. Events are changing to bring about the day of God, which hasteth greatly. This is the point here as we are looking at those events that are transpiring. We need to keep in mind the reason why we are seeing an intensity in the final movement is because Jesus is coming again. These things, as Jesus described them to the disciples in Matthew chapter 24, must come to pass before He comes again. So therefore, as followers of Jesus Christ, when we see these things taking place, as the Bible tells us, when you see these things begin to come to pass, lift up your head towards heaven, for your redemption draweth nigh. That means we need to rejoice. And if we are focusing on the second coming, then we will not fear what is taking place right now and will take place later. So that is the focus there. Notice back to the screen. It goes on to say, Only a moment of time, as it were, yet remains. But while already nation is rising against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, there is not now a general engagement. Notice now, as yet the four winds are held until the servants of God shall be sealed in their foreheads. Then the powers of earth will marshal their forces for the last great battle. God wants to seal his people first before he allow the four winds from the four corners of the earth to be let loose. Go with me to the book of Psalm chapter 2. Let's go to the book of Psalm chapter 2. The nations are getting ready for battle. Now, I must pause here for a moment. And as I've been looking at what the Bible has to say in regard to prophecies and what spirit of prophecy has to say as well in the matter, and also what we are looking at in our world, especially currently, 
this whole lockdown, as I've been researching this, this whole wearing mask, this is a ritual. We are in a spiritual warfare. The world has been offered up to Satan. Satan is almost completely, I should say, have full control of this planet. But as we just read a moment ago, God is still holding back the winds of strife, but letting them go little by little. Again, keep in mind, we were told that in the last days, as Satan knows that he has but a short time, he will exercise all his power as far as God would allow it upon the inhabitants of the earth. This is why there was a woe that was pronounced upon the inhabitants of the earth in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Now notice, we are in the book of Psalm chapter 2. Again, new world order, nations are coming together as one. Spiritual warfare indeed that we are in. And keep in mind, those who will not go along with the new world order, with social distancing guidelines, with uh, the shutdown, with the lockdown, with all of those things, they will be called enemies of the state. Notice carefully, the Bible says in chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Notice now, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Notice the word bend there. What does it mean, bend? It means together. Let us break their bands asunder. What did they do to the world? What did they do to the churches? They prohibited them from coming together, break their ban together, and they basically ban evangelization. They ban the third angel's message from being proclaimed. But still, there will be a faithful few, as in every generation, no matter the time and the season, there will be a faithful few who will go against the laws, the draconian laws, because they want to honor God. Again, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. One world order. This is referring to here. Against the Lord and against his anointed. That would be against God's people. Against the Lord, it is in the form of his servants. Notice, let us break their bands one more time, asunder and cast away their cords from us. Their cords, cords there is a symbol of love. Then it goes on to say, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision, confusion as well. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of, what is it, Zion, and Zion there is God's people. Now, in other words, God said he's in control. As the nation are raging and coming together in this one world order, as it was during the time of the Tower of Babel, Nimrod the build, likewise, God says he is in control of everything that is transpiring. But notice in the next passage, go to the book of Isaiah with me. Isaiah chapter 40. Go to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Notice what the Bible tells us here in the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Let's begin in verse 12. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weigh the mountains in scales, in the hills in a balance, who have directed the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him, with whom 
took the counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed to him the way of understanding behold the nations are as what as a drop of a bucket beautiful the nations one more time are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance behold he taketh up the isles as a very little thing the nations are as what now a drop of a bucket the lord once again is telling you and i he is in control as the nations are coming together as one because of a quote-unquote common enemy an unseen enemy and that would be the quote-unquote corona virus which they say they're going to come together to take care but keep in mind that's revelation chapter 12 verse 17 the dragon will be rough with the remnant of the seed of the woman now as also in the case of revelation chapter 17 let's go there revelation chapter 17 again another passage here that also helps us to see this one world order movement keep in mind they have tried to unite for example europe under a political power it did not work it has not worked but they're going to unite Europe, but not just Europe, but the entire world under a spiritual leader, and that would be the papacy. Notice again, this is in Revelation chapter 17, in verse 13. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Speaking of the nations that we just read about in Psalm chapter 2. Those nations have one mind, and also in Isaiah chapter 40, they will give their power and strength unto the papacy. Notice carefully with me, the next verse there, these, the nations, shall make war with the Lamb, but notice again, the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Again, a reminder as the world is coming together as one, when they do this, they will make war with God's people. But again, God reminds us that he is in control. We must stand the test of time. Go now to Revelation chapter 12. Notice in chapter 12, what the Bible says, there will be a faithful few that will overcome that power. The world, the nations, as they come together as one. Notice carefully with me. It says in verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death. So as we are seeing this one world order coming together, keep in mind the target is Protestantism to annihilate Protestantism. They have already annihilated the middle class, which one more time represents the Protestants or Protestantism. It was the Protestants, Martin Luther, John Haas, Calvin, and Wycliffe, and the others who gave us the middle class. They were the ones standing between the rich and the poor. And they began the protests. And this is what this lockdown, this movement is also about, to shut down Protestantism to shut them away, to lock them up. And now, to get rid as well of the middle class, and as in Revelation chapter 13, to have those two classes of people, rich and poor, great and small, free and bond. And when you have those two classes of people, then you can manipulate the 99% a whole lot better. But again, God will have still some men faithful men and women standing fast for the truth protestantism will not completely annihilated there will be a faithful few but again let me quote this for you we've quoted this before so that you can understand what the agenda is as i just mentioned a moment ago notice carefully again this was written by henry kissinger from the book world order page 3 and page 20 
Religious unity had fractured with the survival and spread of Protestantism. The Protestant Reformation destroyed the concept of a world order sustained by the two swords of papacy and empire. What happened now? As I just mentioned a moment ago, this whole movement is to annihilate, get rid of Protestantism because Protestantism stood in the way of the one world order or the new world order. Well, this is again what they have done with this coronavirus pandemic. Now, again, they have used a powerful weapon here against people to bring about fear, a pandemic. Let's back up. A pandemic, fear mongering, as we saw in that comic picture how they had planned everything out. First fear, then taking control of media, and then order you to keep your distance, social distancing, then the blame game. And then comes martial law, checkpoints. It depends again on where you are. Then the mandatory vaccination that they are pushing for. There's a passage in the book of Proverbs, go there, Proverbs chapter 7, and keep in mind, Revelation chapter 13 tells us that, and the whole world wandered after the beast, and this is what's taking place right now, this is to resurrect the men of sin, Proverbs chapter 7, notice what the Bible tells us in verse 1, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee, keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thine fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy king's woman, that, notice now, they may keep thee from the who? From the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Who is this strange woman in these last days? that the Bible is telling us that the Word of God, if we study it diligently, will keep us away from. That would be the papacy in the last days. She flatters the head of states so that they could bow before it and to exercise their power to bring, as Emperor Justinian did, to help the papacy to come back to power and give the papacy his seat again and power and great authority. Notice carefully what this tells us here. This is from the Vatican News, April 20th, 2020. Returning to the dream of the what now? Of the founding fathers. Pope Francis warned that after the Second World War, this continent, speaking of Europe, was able to rise again thanks to a concrete spirit of, what's the word, solidarity that enabled it to overcome the rivalries of the past. The ancient virus, the ancient what now? The ancient virus of division and selfishness returns along with the ever effective vaccine of, next word, solidarity or to use an expression even more dear to the Pope of human, what's the next word? Fraternity. Pope Francis' dream for Europe is the same as that of the Founding Fathers. This is truly the time of one more time solidarity in which no one reaches salvation by what now? By themselves. That is so contrary to the Word of God. No one reaches salvation by themselves. That means you must join this unity, this one world government. Speaking of unity, notice carefully. This tells us here from CNN, April 16, 2020. Francis Macron positioning himself as leader of the world. Francis 42nd old president Emmanuel Macron, who has faced many challenges governing his country, is now positioning himself to take over the mantle of global leadership. Long reserved 
to the older leaders of China, Russia, or especially the United States. And right now, he has no real challengers. The vehicle of this leadership campaign is Macron's proposal for a worldwide ceasefire. Keep those words in mind. A truce everywhere from Afghanistan to Syria, Iraq, and Yemen. The question we want to ask here is, who is the enemy then? Everything is being put on lockdown. Everything is being put under control. Even wars that are going on in some part of the world must be put on lockdown because we are now fighting a different enemy. It's a spiritual warfare that's taking place. Listen carefully. Paris, as you've never seen or heard it before. But don't be fooled. Beneath the quiet, there is no peace here, but rather a war that is being waged by one of Europe's largest armed forces deployed on its own soil against an invisible enemy. Nous sommes en guerre. From the start, President Macron declared war on the coronavirus, launching Operation Resilience in late March from Mulhouse, the focus of the French outbreak, as he visited a military hospital erected on a parking lot next to the overwhelmed civilian one, the first such facility ever to be used in peacetime. To lessen the burden on the hard-hit East, France's rail infrastructure has been mobilized with TGV trains transporting the sick towards available ICUs. The army also evacuating critical coronavirus patients with the help of planes equipped with intensive care facilities so far only ever used to transport the war wounded in Afghanistan and Kosovo. On the seas, helicopter carriers are being deployed to the southern Indian Ocean and to the Caribbean to help France's overseas territories. Warships also ferrying patients to the mainland. The operation placing France's military in an unprecedented peacetime role. But even the mightiest are vulnerable. The French Navy's flagship, the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier, forced back to port for disinfection on Sunday after nearly 50 on board tested positive for the coronavirus. Every evening, France continues to applaud the real heroes of this crisis, the medical workers fighting an enemy that has already killed 15,000 people in this country alone. Fighting an unseen enemy on their own soil sees fire everywhere. We have a coming enemy in our own soil, a virus, quote unquote, a virus in this new world order. They are fighting against their own people, but bullseye, it's going to be God's people, to be able to control God's people. But again, who put Macron in that position to lead this new world order? But before we answer this, go to the book of Daniel with me. Daniel chapter 11, king of the north and king of the south. Daniel chapter 11, notice carefully. In the book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 40, the Bible says, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. And what is the king of the south? Or who is the king of the south? That's atheism, licentiousness. We read about that in Revelation chapter 11. That is the, during the French Revolution. That is that system there. But then the Bible says, and the king of the north shall come against him like whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over the king of the north is none other than the papacy. We don't need to go over this. We've, we've talked about this before. We have proven from the Bible that the king of the north is the papacy. Is that system the same way, the same system we find during the French Revolution. Now we have those two nations or those two systems coming together. The king of the north papacy coming at secularism, France, and now working together and showing who is not in common. Notice from the America Jesuit magazine, April 21st, 2020. 
Pope Francis speaks with French President Macron about coronavirus international debt relief. Pope Francis and French President Emmanuel Macron spoke together by phone, reaching a significant convergence of views on several issues, including how the European Union can respond in a united way to the coronavirus pandemic and the need for debt reduction in the developing world. The president's office said Pope Francis expressed his closeness and support to France where COVID-19 has claimed more than 20,000 lives. Pope Francis and President Macron agreed on the need for a global ceasefire in all conflicts. Where did we read those words before? Back to this article, latter part there, it says the vehicle of this leadership campaign is Macron's proposal for a worldwide ceasefire. Same language we just read here, Pope Francis and President Macron agreed on the need for a global ceasefire in all conflicts. Before this pandemic lockdown or pandemic lockdown, because there was some movement with Turkey and, and some were saying, hey, that's the king of the no, no, brothers and sisters. These are the systems. These are the players. Friends, the system, secularism, atheism, licentiousness, the papacy, the so-called spiritual leader of the world coming like whirlwind, not in control to push what? For a new world order. Notice the next article here that also confirms this. From Yahoo Finance, April 24th, 2020. World leaders launch plan to speed COVID-19 drugs vaccine. U.S. stays away. U.S. stays away. Who's in command? Who has taken the lead? French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and South African President Cyril were among those who joined a video conference to launch what the WHO bill as a landmark collaboration to fight the pandemic. Who is leading this? Emmanuel Macron. Who put him in charge of this? The papacy, the king of the north. And we've been hearing this echo of one world order, one world order. Notice the next one here. From News Ghana, April 15, 2020. Senegalese president calls for new world order in the face of COVID-19. Notice, the president of Senegal, Macky Sall is calling for countries to work together to bring about a world order that puts human beings and humanity at the way now, at the center of international relations. The time has come to consider public health issues on an equal footing with what else? Peace, security, the environment, and the fight against terrorism and other cross-border crimes. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction is come upon them. What have they used again? Health issues to bring about fear. And they have done such a good job at convincing people by using fear and the propaganda machine, the media, that everybody surrender their liberty, their freedom without a fight. Notice carefully, article goes on to say, the new world order that I'm calling for requires mutual trust and a sincere willingness to cooperate on issues of what now? Common interests and shared values while respecting our differences and diversities with respect to global public health issues. This new world order will have, notice now, to exclude all forms of what? Discrimination, stigmatization, and prejudice. Notice the word, out, are also the what now? The doomed scenarios that try to draw, and what else? An apocalyptic future for the continent. In other words, if you believe in Bible prophecies, then you cannot be part of this new world order. And 
If you cannot be part of this new world order, that means you are now the enemy that they are preparing their armies for. Do you get it? That's what's happening. Now, last Sabbath, I show an event that was coming and came, which was called One World Together at Home. One World Together at Home. Now, here's what I want to show you. One World Together at Home on the left. But if you look on the right, you could see the symbolism there with the hand on top of the earth and the hand at the bottom. It shows the new world order, how they have demonstrated their power to lock you up in your home. And brothers and sisters, we are again almost home. What we are seeing here, this was something they've been wanting to do for a very long time. They've been talking about a new world order, a new world order again, where the rights or the constitutional rights of nations have been abolished. We are living in a new system, in a new world order. And keep in mind, this is a ritual. This is spiritualism as well. The wearing of masks and all of those things is spiritualism. This is symbolic of a change. The mask on your face, it represents that you are dead now to the old world. Now this is the new world order. When we allow you to take this mask off, then it will be a new world order. This is what taking place right now. This is spiritualism. This is a ritual that's taking place right now. Speaking of ritual, notice carefully. This is from Global Citizen, April 19, 2020. Six health experts weigh in on COVID-19 doing one world together at home. The world's biggest stars united for a night of entertainment as part of Global Citizen's One World Together at Home, curated in collaboration with Lady Gaga and uh, some other so-called stars. Skip on down with me. Then it says to take viewers through various aspects of the public health crisis. Now this so-called event there, One World Together at Home, was broadcast throughout the entire world, was broadcast by the majority of the television networks. While they have you on like down, they were bringing entertainment, as we just read, to brainwash you. It is a ritual. We are in the middle of a satanic ritual. Notice carefully, it goes on to say, the global event, which consisted of a six-hour digital event, followed by a two-hour television broadcast, raised $127.9 million, providing $55.1 million to the WHO's COVID-19, what's the word again? Solidarity Response Fund, and it goes on to say some more. Notice, this is from the WHO director. He says, this moment is an opportunity to, what's the word, join together to prevent future outbreaks. So you must join together in order to prevent future outbreaks. Well, I am against joining together, so therefore, send the plagues. Notice carefully. Director General of the WHO, Dr. Tedros Adhanom, delivered a unifying and hopeful message to viewers watching around the world. Let's listen to what he had to say. Notice carefully. Today, we come together as one to express our common humanity. COVID-19 has taken so much from us, but it has also given us unique opportunity to put aside our differences, to break down barriers. I want to thank Lady Gaga, the many artists and humanitarians, global citizen, my friend Hugh Evans, and the United Nations for bringing us together as one world together at home. Put aside our differences and what else now? Break down barriers. You understand what that means, right? Put aside truth. Mm -mm. 
We don't want truth. Remember, the Bible tells us in the last days, the truth will not be popular, brothers and sisters. Break down the barriers, the walls that separate us and come together. Come together as one. And who else that they're using, who also participated in this ritual, this one world together at home. Notice carefully. Hi, my name is Greta Thunberg. I am a climate and environment activist speaking to you from my couch in Stockholm, Sweden. I want to send all my love and support to everyone who is struggling in these difficult times and to everyone who is working on the front lines to keep the rest of us safe. We are right now in a crisis and we cannot solve any crisis without treating it as a crisis. We now must put our differences aside and cooperate and listen to the science and the experts, as in every emergency. Humanity has to stand together in solidarity and leave no one behind. And then when this is finally over, we must start building real sustainable societies within the planetary boundaries. Thank you so much. I wish you a great evening. Same words Greta Thunberg used there. We must put our differences aside and cooperate and listen to the science. Break down the barriers. Put the differences aside. And again, let me show you the ritual that took place. While they were having this event, it was a satanic ritual and they had everybody on lockdown in front of their TV to Watch this satano ritual, satanic ritual. Notice carefully this picture here. You could see Lady Gaga with that one eye covered and with that upside down cross, that Antichrist cross. And then One World Together at Home, sponsored by Global Citizen and who else? World Health Organization. It's a satanic ritual. The whole lockdown is an offering that has been made to the devil. We have been offered to the devil. This is the reason why we have to stand on the promises of Jesus and not fear to speak, to proclaim the message for this time. And who else but who participated in this ritual? Notice carefully. On the screen, you can see this is Bill and Melinda Gates. And what did they have to say while they were on this virtual show that was going on? Again, you can guess what they had to say, but notice carefully. There are a lot of people who are hurting, and all of us want this to be over as soon as possible. The good news is that by the, making the right decisions now, we can save lives. We can get our country back to work, and eventually we can get kids back to school too. The eventual end comes when we get a vaccine that the eventual end comes when we get a vaccine that protects all of us, not just in the US and the entire world. There's a lot of vaccine candidates uh, that we're backing and I'm optimistic uh, by late next year, one of those will come out and we need to make sure that gets out to everyone in the world. That's right. Our response to this pandemic won't be effective unless it's equitable. Our response to this pandemic won't be effective unless it's equitable. Equitable. One more time. He said the eventual end comes when we get a vaccine. And if you listen and watch the facial expression of those people, they were demon possessed. Demon possessed. But what's the word that they use there? The word equitable, which means fair and impartial and equitable balance of power. Where have we read something like this? Go to the book of Isaiah with me. Isaiah chapter 59. Notice carefully. Keep in mind in the context that they use the word equitable. We have to make it fair. That means everybody must be vaccinated. Make it fair for everybody else. Notice carefully. It says here in Isaiah chapter 59, the Bible says, beginning in verse 13, in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For notice now, 
truth is falling in the street and uh, there's the word equity cannot enter and that word equity means uprightness those who practice uprightness and telling truth cannot enter cannot belong to this new world order because all of these people are liars they are lying to you with a beautiful smile on their faces beautiful smile on their faces then the bible says yea true faileth and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey and the lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment if you're gonna stand for truth in these last days mm -mm, you're gonna be an enemy of this new world order because the whole thing it is based on lies it's like the song that they used to sing tell me lies tell me sweet little lies notice the next article with me again they pushing for this vaccination thing vaccination this tells us here from the united nations secretary general april 24 2020 secretary general's remarks at the launch of the statement of commitment and call for support for the global collaboration to accelerate the development production in equitable access to new covid 19 tools as delivered in an interconnected world none notice now none of us is safe until what now until all of us are safe covid 19 respects no borders covid 19 anywhere is a threat to people everywhere the world needs the development production and what's the word again equitable delivery of safe and effective covid 19 vaccine so none of us is safe without a vaccine so therefore this is the reason why bill gates is talking about a digital vaccine certificate so that they know who's been vaccinated and you cannot live in that new world order society without having this poison inside of you i shared with you in the last video sabbath afternoon the steps that you can take to defend yourself against this mandatory vaccination that they are pushing if you haven't watched the video again i'll put the link under this video please watch it notice carefully again it says the world needs the development production and equitable delivery of safe and effective covid 19 vaccine therapeutics and diagnostics not a vaccine or treatment for one country or one region or one half of the world but a vaccine and treatment that are affordable safe pause is there such a thing as a safe vaccine no brothers and sisters this is again a deception a lie fear mongering notice now safe effective and what else easily administered and universally available for everyone where everywhere well again death before dishonor that means wherever you are on the face of the planet if you are a human being living on this planet you cannot escape it that's what they are saying this is a time when we must have the attitude though he slay me yet will i trust him this is the time we must have the attitude as joshua as for me and my house we will serve the lord this is the time we must have the attitude as peter and the disciples we ought to obey god rather than men there are natural ways to go about killing this virus notice carefully with me sunlight destroys coronavirus quickly says u.s scientists science and technology advisor to the department of homeland security secretary told reporters at the white house that government scientists had found ultraviolet rays had a potent impact on the pathogen offering hope that its spread may ease over the summer our most striking observation to date is the powerful effect 
that solar light appears to have on killing the virus both surfaces and in the air. In other words, just like we were told, sunlight, fresh air, exercise, reading your, your Bible, and so on and so forth. Those are the natural remedies for any type of diseases. This is exactly what they are saying here. And again, keep in mind, this came from the White House. It came from the White House. But the power that be don't really want to hear about those things. They want to control every aspect of your life. Now, one more article I will share with you to back up what I just said. How they want to control your every move, everything that you are doing. This is again the new world order. They tell you to stay six feet away from each other. Even right now, as they are starting to open things back up, they are still telling you that you cannot go to the park, you cannot gather with more than 10 people in one place. This is control. It's not about a virus. It's all about control. Control. Let me show you this article now. This is from CNN, April 24th, 2020. Men should do grocery shopping during pandemic as women take too long. Japanese mayor says, what is it now? This is another command. Well, men don't take that much time when they go shopping. Women take too much time. Let's switch the order. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that this was part of the new world order to change the role of men and women, to switch them around, to go against the order of God. And I'm not saying that only women should go shopping. That's not what I'm saying. But what they are pushing for right now is really what they had already told us years ago to come into the family, the marriages, and break it, and bring about confusion, bring about division. That's what they're doing there. Notice carefully. Women take a longer time grocery shopping because they browse through different products and weigh out which option is best. Matsui told reporters at a coronavirus news conference in Osaka on Thursday, Men quickly grab what they told to buy so they won't linger at the supermarket. That avoids close contact with others. I'm not sure if I should comment on that, whether this is true or not. I will let you ladies decide this matter. Let's go back to the screen. Osaka has been under a state of emergency since April 7th. Matsui's comments came after he suggested supermarkets limit the number of people entering stores where possible and notice now recommended the public only shop for groceries once every two to three days this is control again creating division confusion even in the home between husband and wife they're getting into all aspects of life because it's a new world order therefore we need to understand that things are happening rapidly because jesus is coming again because as jesus mentioned in matthew 24 these things must take place first then the son of man you will see him appear in the clouds of glory go to romans chapter 13 with me romans chapter 13 notice what the bible tells us here in romans chapter 13 the Bible says in verse 11, Romans 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. It is too late to be a gossiper. It is too late to backbiting, too late to keep enjoying the things of this world. It is high time for us to awake out of sleep, to understand our condition, to plead for mercy before God, to spare us, to save us. 
it is time to watch and pray and fast. Next verse, it says, Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and rottenness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on who? The Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision, not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. It is time to consecrate, rededicate, to be revived. Rededicate ourselves to Jesus Christ because the final movements are indeed rapid ones. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Thoughts from Mount of Blessings, 120, paragraph 2. The prophecies that receive a partial fulfillment in the overthrow of Jerusalem have noticed now a more direct application when to the last days, we are now standing on the threshold of great and solemn events. A crisis is before us, such as the world has never witnessed, and sweetly to us, as to the first disciples, comes the assurance, notice now, that God's kingdom ruleth over all. The program of coming events is in the hands of who? of our maker, the majesty of heaven, has the destiny of nations as well as the concerns of his church in his own charge. The divine instructor is saying to every agent in the accomplishment of his plans, as he said to Cyrus, I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. It is time to get to know our loving Savior, Jesus Christ because the time indeed is at hand. Let's pray. Loving Father which art in heaven, as we can see the world is coming together as one, uniting together. Help us to come together as one, uniting with you in the truth. This is what your church need right now. This is what you want to see happen, as in the case of the disciples on the day of Pentecost, how they came together, lay aside, their bitterness, confess their sins, and they experience as a result a great revival. And we believe that you want us to experience a revival of primitive godliness. I believe that is your will for us now. Help us to empty ourselves so that we might receive the outpouring of the latter rain. Forgive us of all our sins, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.